I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a good fun video to talk about and we're all about discussion here. And the discussion today is, is World of Warships boring and toxic and rules to overcome that and how to become a, if you're a new player, how to become better. So uh, as always, before we begin, like, subscribe, button below, appreciate all the support at 4,000 subs to do another premium giveaway. So let's get to the topic of today, which has really been on my mind and a lot of people's mind. Sea Lord Mountain Batman and other guys I've been watching have really talked about you know, what is the state of World of Warships today? Why is it becoming uh, kind of more about money grabbing, grabbing? And why is Wargaming doing all this? And why are people complaining? Are we having problems with matchmaking and money and credit systems? And we'll talk all about that today. And, th and I want to actually make this video pretty... Um, I would say discussion oriented and based and and what is the problem and where where this where's this going and as a player base we can't change the game it's war, war gaming uh and they're kind of that dictatorship monopoly and we can't really do much about that other than what we can control ourselves so let's talk about the topic at hand um i saw on the other day the game is why is it boring and then also why is it so toxic so key number one rule is uh one uh, you have to make it fun for yourself and for me as a destroyer main i think the first rule is be a destroyer player. Yes, I agree. Most of you guys want to become the battleships, the cool looking battleships and the cruisers and everything. But if you want to make this fun, I recommend being a destroyer player first. Um, and you'll see, understand why, because you're the one that does everything and it teaches you how to become a much, much better player. So later on, when you become that destroyer player, I'm sorry, cruiser player or battleship player, that you will take in those skills learned as a destroyer player and work your way up. And I think that you're more engaging as a destroyer player. And you're going to show, I'm going to show these videos why. And here's the first video uh, as to why I think one, a destroyer player is better. And number two is why has it become boring and even toxic? And then number rule number two is really turn off chat. If you're a brand new player in the game and you think this game is toxic and a lot of bad there, I mean, this is the internet, okay? You go to a Merc room or a chat room or whatever that may be. And you're going to find the world of the internet hate. And honestly, that's not very encouraging. I'm, I mean, I'm a pilot in the military. And uh, when I went through pilot training, uh, I remember getting yelled at all the time and everything, even basic training, getting yelled at all the time. And you notice it's not very conducive to learning. You know, however, it does get you your mindset right. I would say there's good and bads on it. One, if you have a right amount of yelling or criticism and so forth, that does allow you to change your thoughts and your way and actually learn from that, you know, potential mistakes or to hone in on your brain to really, oh, I know that's bad. I'm not going to do that again. The other aspect is it can be too negative. When you all you have is someone just instead of focusing on learning, just really wanted to berate you and just like the Internet of the day. They, anybody that's anonymous can say whatever with their keyboard keyboard warriors, right? They just want to say whatever they want to say to just tear you down and apart, and there is no aspect of learning whatsoever. Then that's just a, a world of hate, and you don't need that. So uh, re my recommendation is, as uh, step one, pick a destroyer, and number two is turn off chat. Because as you can notice in the game, you can communicate through the game just by simple clicking of, hey, I'm going here, click, 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 or hey, affirmative, or Wilco, or requesting support, or I'm capping alpha, or I'm attacking this guy. You can do that all in game without having to use chat. I think chat was just introduced to just have... You know, cheerful banter, but it turns out that it becomes, you know, like the internet of anything, there's always onesies or twosies. I'm not saying all. There are onesies or twosies out there that are anonymous, just want to get a rise out of people and just want to make the internet and whatever, and they want to yell. But that's the biggest first two steps. If you're a brand new player in there or even a veteran, I recommend playing destroyers first and then obviously turn off chat. And then we're going to talk about what led to all this problems right here. So let's take a look at this map. Again, uh, I, I took this from uh, just, you know, random plays that I saw on the render of uh, the Discord channel on World of Warships. These are posted. They're free to look at. Anybody can look at them. I encourage you guys to go down there and take a look at it as well. I pulled this one, just random ones, and I've rendered a couple myself. But I'll play it for you right now, and I'll tell you why the game is the way it is and why, first of all, what is what is causing this to be boring? One, majority of the ships, you can tell, are battleship players and cruiser players are typically sitting where I'm showing you around. They're in the back. That is step number or problem number one. Most people don't want to push up in a hardened, armored, tankier battleship or cruiser that, you know, is designed to take punishment to an extent. 
Number two is um, you introduce the games. And here's, again, I don't hate me on this, but I say the biggest problem right now is carriers and submarines because they are the anti-ship of the world. I mean, literally, the reason why World of Warships was created that got me into the game was this is a game about shooting other battleships or cruisers. It's warships, okay? You're warring ships against each other where you just cannon fire back and forth, back and forth on artillery game. The problem it, I've seen is that with the introduction of carriers that literally sit in the back back here, they can do that because carriers typically don't have long range guns. They have aircraft. And that is the what, what did history tell us that the airplane is what destroyed the Navy It is what did, or I guess not the Navy itself, but the, the Navy in the sense of battleship warfare back in the day, because guess what? Just like the Japanese did in Pearl Harbor, they found that the airplane was the greatest tool to fight armored sitting platforms that just sit there and airplanes can maneuver at will and just drop bombs on you all day long. There's really not much you can do about it. Number two is the this little guy right here, the Gato. You can see that that is a submarine. The submarine is also an anti-ship vehicle. I mean, the plane is an anti-ship vehicle. The sub is an anti-ship vehicle. Now you're going to watch the replay and see what that does to a team. All right, so we're just playing this right off the bat. Okay, notice, notice, notice right there. You can see that the first reason I like about destroyers is you're the first in the objective. Number two, you don't see any battleships or cruiser player in any of the objectives. Okay, here's another reason why it's boring. People are not playing the objectives. The objective of the game is one, whoever has the most points at the end of the day wins, right? How do you accomplish that? One, take the objectives and hold them for long periods of time. And again, I didn't say it was the first one to take it. It's the person that actually can hold it the longest and maintain your survivability. That's that's what makes it fun, right? Just like in Call of Duty. You go hold an objective and you may die here and there, but you come back. And the problem is World of Warships, you cannot come back from your death. So it is imperative that you survive the long run and you uh, hold the and capture objective, objectives. That's what makes it fun. Notice that the battleships and cruisers will not do that majority of the time. So there's your problem. Now, what is causing the problem of these guys sitting in the back? Well, it's right here. You have two destroyer or submarine players up front, and you have the destroyer players in the caps. Your role as a destroyer player is to uh, initially spot and then, of course, kill the other destroyers that are trying to cap the cap points. And, of course, you also want to um, torpedo shoot cap whatever every, the destroyer does everything but they're the first ones in first ones out they go in go out and cap and try to hold the, the, the submarine player seems to be the new destroyer player these days because your concealment okay if you don't if you're new here if you don't understand what concealment is go search on the youtube what that is but basically that is the range as to which people will detect you uh, initially the as long as you don't fire your guns your detection means that at, for example, a submarine right now is 5.5 kilometers or 5 kilometers, and I have to breach that 5-kilometer distance in order to see you. If this submarine is 6 kilometers, I have to go within 6 or less in order to see you. Destroyer players, same uh, gearing. is typically around 5.8, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just pulling numbers out of my head here. A 5.8 concealment, which means that this player, uh, say a red player, has to go into this circle of five, draw imaginary circle around this player here of 5.8 kilometers in game. And once that red player enters that five kilometer point, if there's no smoke and there's no firing or no nothing breaking that line of sight, you will then spot. And that's why typically destroyer players are fun to play with. Your consumption so low that you can actually run around the map autonomously, unabated, and you can really try to go cap points and, and do it without being shot at because being shot at is bad, right? So that's what stealthy players and are fun about a destroyer player. It allows you to maintain your awareness of your concealment. As a battleship player and a cruiser player, your concealment's like out to what? 18, 14, 15, 17? They're huge. They're, you're, you're a lighthouse, basically, right? So it's very difficult to actually manage your um, concealment as a bigger player um, instead of besides using island cover and so forth. But with a destroyer player, you can move around, start using island cover. You can break line of sight. You can get within. You can, you're actually monitoring your detection way, way more than, as I say, a cruiser and battleship player, which means that you're paying attention a little bit more to your surroundings, to your ship abilities, and so forth. That's why I recommend you play a destroyer player first, because it requires a high level of attention to detail to play. Submarine player, not so much, because why? You can just go underwater, boom, you're gone. What fun is that? All right, let's get back to the topic. Why is this toxic and boring? Well, one... Look at the, what the submarine players are doing. They're creating this pr imaginary line where nobody wants to push forward and engage anymore other than let's just shoot from long distance and hope for the best. And if you don't have somebody spotting, which means that somebody's out in front looking at these targets, kind of like a forward observer, 
you can't really shoot. And that's why I get yelled at all the time uh, in chat and say, hey, you're not spotting for me. It's like, well, look, my job is seven. I have seven other jobs as a destroyer player. I'm not here just to cater you. That's why I say turn off chat and just focus on your objective, focus on surviving and helping your team as best you can. Avoid the chat and the toxic gameplay. You can turn chat back on later on when you're more, uh, I guess, susceptible to criticism and you can know the game a little bit better. But right now, turn off chat, don't listen. Just watch the pings and everything that are being requested in the game. Is Okay, look, you have a Burgoyne going backwards. You have a Siegfried going backwards. You have a Mosca going backwards. You've got a main that's sitting between two islands, which really cannot really support anything in here. So that's why Alpha's being taken over, maybe. And then you got Wisconsin going backwards. you got a Slav over here. Yama okay, let's take a look at how this progresses up. Again, the submarine player, why I've said this is making it boring is because it's just sitting in the... It's sitting right here being a threat to everybody because why? Most battleship and cruiser players, all they have to defend against themselves for an underwater object is really these so-called ASW or anti-submarine warfare or AKA uh, a plane that drops a depth charge. I didn't join World of Warships to play that kind of style of gameplay. I didn't play this game so I can drop a plane with a depth charge in it called anti-submarine warfare. That, that's not, you want to play that kind of game, wargaming, go, go play Silent Hunter or something like that that is focused on submarine warfare. This is literally, I thought, more of the long lines of a surface warfare artillery kind of game Kind of like, uh, remember back in the day, the game there was called like Worms or Lemmings, whatever it was. I think it was Worms, where you're shooting artillery back and forth and tanks and scorched earth. You're just shooting artillery games, um, artillery shells back and forth. But if you're going to play, like, well, imagine that game if it had a submarine come from underneath the ground and start killing all your guys and you, you couldn't do anything about it. It makes for a boring game and you're going to kill the game that way, right? So again, I digress. Let's play this one. Notice how the submarine players are playing. Okay, so the, the destroyer players did their job. That's why I enjoy it so much. You're, you're going to get fired at. You're going to get shot at. whoop de doo But you look what you're doing. Now, look look, look where the rest of the team is. Again, it's just submarine warfare back and forth. If you want to play submarines, go play Sign Hunter. But whatever. They're just shooting back and forth, torpedoes back and forth. And nobody's going to go ahead and push forward. And these little objects right here, you can see that's the anti-submarine warfare. That's what these ships are doing. Because, you know, you got to turn your guns away from shooting main objectives here and actually focus on killing a submarine. Because why? The submarine is the most toxic thing in the game right now, in my personal opinion, besides a carrier. And you can see, okay, look, look, look where the game is. It's just sitting in the back, sitting in the back. Sitting, you're, you're, you're not even passing the D line, which, I mean, how are you going to support anybody that wants to take the objective, whatever, right? Okay, at least this cruiser player is actually using his HP and actually supporting his players and moving forward. Okay, again, still submarine battle going on here, and it's already been, what, like halfway through the game right here almost? Let's see how many minutes have elapsed through the game. I can't really tell on this one. Whoop de doo. Look at that. How fun is this? Slava at the B line going back here. Everybody's pointing. Notice everybody's vector pointing away because that's what you have to do nowadays. I mean, I don't blame the player. You're just going to have to kite away. And that's the term I'm hearing a lot kite away in a ship where you're supposed to be shooting forward and not using kites, whatever. And there's the gameplay for you. Okay, we're already like kind of halfway through the game now, and just look at where this game is going. Finally, somebody decides now after the submarine player has been eliminated, right? The Balao, the Bergon finally depth charged right here. You can see it depth charged the Balao, which is a submarine player. It requires that many depth charges to kill. Okay, now we're starting to see finally you notice at the end of the game where the submarine is gone. And um, there's not really much of a carrier, obviously, in this game. But once those guys are eliminated, finally we can actually play the game now. And that's where Hopefully, this game becomes a little bit more engaging and fun. Okay, and look, submarine player harassing a Stalingrad. Wait, look at the I and J line. Again, I mean, first of all, this is a kind of a rant. I get it. No, most people don't like being negative, but I'm just showing you what the, the problem is, and let's find a solution to solve this problem. All right, you can see right there. Okay, now we're having some fun. Okay, there's some fun left in the game here. We're three on one versus ship and running away Slava. Okay, whoop de doo Looks like the red team's about to win, right? But here's the other problem with uh, World Warships. It seems like nowadays with the introduction, look at this, submarine running around, he's now going to go in and literally mop up the game. Okay, we thought red team was winning. Right? Look, what red team has about 903 points to 621. We thought they were winning. Okay, Shikishima goes down. Look, a massive battleship taken out by, yep, a submarine player. And I mean, I'm telling you, if that's the game, good job, submarine player. You doing your job. You are an anti-ship piece of weaponry right there. And main goes down again to, yep, another submarine player. 
And look at that. Submarine player is going to wipe out another battery. What can he do? I mean, honestly, what can this... I, I have no techniques. I don't know what else I could do to help you solve this dilemma right here other than pick a game that doesn't have a submarine. An anti-ship, anti-battleship weapon. I mean, it's like a ray gun. It's a, an anti-ship ray gun that just goes in and mops up the guy. Okay, he's dead. Victory, yeah. They just came back, literally. The submarine came back and went, won the whole game for him. And... I mean, a poor guy for Republic, he did, I mean, all he could do is go in the back and kill everybody for him, but, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, let's take a look at another Montana replay. Let's take a look at this one. All right, again, we have, ooh, and now, another reason why this has become boring and toxic is because of submarine player, and we have this little object right here, as you can see, that is a uh, carrier. And notice that this carrier is a Saipan, which means he's a lower tier, not tier 10, he's a tier 8. Um, forgive me, I believe that's tier eight. I mean, that's the only way you could play against a tier 10, right? There's, you can only play tier eight, nine, and 10. You can be only up tier two levels. So, oh, look at this. We have another submarine player, two submarine players. Why I bring this to match. So imagine this as a battleship player. You have literally two anti battleship, large ship weapon systems in here. And you have another anti, uh, world war two and beyond anti ship weapon system right there. That's three that you're going against. Okay. So why do I say pick a, uh, you know, we only have what, one, we have one destroyer player in this game, I believe. I don't see any other destroyer player. Now, I'm a destroyer player main. I like to play the, the Forest Sherman, one of those, one of the best destroyers I've played. But your role is to go in, shoot other destroyer players, cap and so forth, and spot for the rest of the team. Now, how are you supposed to do that with another submarine, an anti-ship weapon system, and another anti, notice that the submarines are the ones, are the new destroyer player, and they're going in and capping. So... Okay, right off the bat, how do we see that? Okay, we already seen a couple ships taken off the map, right? Oh, no, have we? No. Okay, so still, okay. Look look, look at what's going on here. A Schlieffen going in reverse. We got a Shikishima going in reverse, vector north. We have another battleship vector north, Wisconsin, which is the new Doctor Battleship. Where they, I, I did a review. I was a little harsh on it, saying, hey, it needs to be more powerful. A lot of people say it's really, really overpowered, super powerful. But like I said, it's not about the ship. It's about the play style, the player. How are you going to use this weapon system to your advantage? Yes, there are a couple of um, you know videos out there showing them dev striking and citadeling, but it's on a case-by-case -case basis. But the majority of the time, I've noticed, I've been just burning down Wisconsin's as a destroyer player. So, And now you're introducing the CV player and the, uh, the submarine, and those are anti-ship weapon systems. So I love the Wisconsin. Don't get me wrong. I love Wisconsin. I love Iowa. I love Missouri. I love uh, all the Iowa-class battleships. Those are the ones that I really, really do enjoy. And I just wish uh, they were just a little bit better that I can use to handle this situation that we're currently in. But again, this is about how can we get better? Okay, uh, Sherman goes down right off the bat to an Otago, and Otago is being torqued by the um, the submarine player. So nothing you can do right there. All right, let's take a look at where the battle is kind of turning out here. All right, we got submarine, again, dominating the center there. Nothing they can do. All the battleships can do is just, I can't see the guy. What more can I do? It's not like I'm going to pop a hydro, like back in the day, sonar, and find the submarine. He cannot spot him. He out-detects the Wisconsin. Wisconsin's concealment is around 12.9-ish, whatever, right? If you build for it, the submarine player is about 5.5-ish, or 5. It doesn't matter. It's not, you can't spot the guy. There's no way to spot this guy with no technology, no spotting, no destroyer player, nothing that they, these guys can do. Why is this so boring now? There's nothing this guy can do. And I don't know how I, I don't know what to do to solve this Wisconsin player and the Schlieffel player to help him out. If you guys have a tip and technique, let me know. Other than hey, quitting the game. Again, another submarine player and another submarine player dominating this entire area. Look, this literally is an area of denial. There is literally nothing this player can these players can do to deny this area right here. And nothing you can do to deny this area right here. These guys are dominating. And I don't blame these guys for going in the back. There's nothing more you can do. And then, of course, you have a submarine up here killing off the only destroyer player that can potentially back in the day hunt the destroyer, the submarine player. That's all you can do. Okay, at least the Schlieffen player decides to push up, but unfortunately, although this is the best secondary ship in the game, in my personal opinion, he can't do much. He's just going to get farmed down to damn it, farmed to death, or just get burned down by Burgoyne. Let's see what he can do. Hopefully, the Schlieffen player can take down the Burgoyne. Finally, though, okay, I think the Burgoyne is taken down by the Schlieffen secondary. Finally, that is fun. Okay, I admit, there is one aspect. This guy had fun. He actually went on a Burgoyne one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what made World of Warships fun. These guys on the west side, not so much having fun. And now look at the way this game has turned out to be. It's literally just, these guys are just running for their lives, just waiting to die because there's nothing more they can do. These guys are just sitting in the back. 
uh, and holding the Bravo Alpha Bravo cap, and there, that's all you can really do. Now, this guy, Wisconsin, he thought, well, okay, maybe I can push forward, have some fun, and try to eliminate some of these players. Unfortunately, I'm getting hunted bound by an anti-battleship weapon system here, and I have to turn around. Even though I have a submarine player, the submarine player can only do so much to hunt submarines. And look, it's just turned into this kind of like nose in, reversing battleship, re you know, long range shooting kind of play style. And I don't, there's nothing more. And it's, it's come to the point where, okay, finally somebody's pushing forward a Shikashima, which nothing you can do there. Not really a secondary battleship other than big guns that just shoot at big, gar a lot of large objects. Okay. All right, Wisconsin player. And. Yep, let's see here. He, he tried to go out, and he's being killed. He tried to push, and he's dead. Schlieffen player trying to do something here, but, I mean, this Montana is, like I said, I think the Montana is one of the most powerful battleships out there, and it's wrecking shop on all these Wisconsins, as you can see right there. Schlieffen is trying to do secondary. Now, this guy's having fun. Okay, he's actually doing what I thought World Warships, Warships was about, pushing objectives, pushing caps, trying to take on other battleships. Yay, that's fun. I encourage that. Way to go, player. Unfortunately, he gets taken out by Montana. Yeah, Montana just got big guns, and there's nothing you can do. He's getting shot out by a commissary airplane. I mean, look, the CV player is literally just going around spot. Now, here's the other problem. The carrier player is an anti-ship weapon system. It's going to literally send objects out to go out and look for you, kind of like drones, uh, kind of like in today's warfare today. As you can see the news. You can see all these drone things flying around, just killing you with autonomy, and just they just hunt you down, kill you without any regard for their own safety. Because why? You can shoot down as many planes as you want, and there, he's this guy's still alive. Look, his health is almost full, and he's tier eight. And all he's gonna do is sit in the back there. Oh, finally, a submarine player finds him, and he's dead. Saipan depth charge, automatic depth charge. Those are the only two guys that can. The two anti ship systems are trying to fight each other. What? How is this fun? Tell me, you know, in a world of just battleships, cruisers, and destroyers, these two guys duking it out, how is that fun? Tell me. These guys have to come through this choke point right because they're forced to because they have no idea where the submarine player potentially is at, and I think he's dead already, whatever, but Montana will just go in and blast the Wisconsin. Yep, they're dead, and that's victory. Wow. Who are the surviving players? This carrier and maybe the last submarine right there, and that's all they could do. You got a cracking great job right there. You did an awesome job saving the team, but... You had to do it from the back of the map. I mean, as long as that destroyer player in the, but honestly, the submarine is what dominated the Alpha Bravo. And I don't like, and I'm not saying submarines are bad players or anything. I'm just saying that I don't like playing submarines because I, I thought World of Warships was about surface warfare artillery, click a trigger, fire a gun. And that's what's enjoyable about it, right? I, I thought that's what the game was about. So let's talk about, um, why, why I say this, because honestly, nowadays, uh, the biggest thing is that the, the fact that you have to play this kind of standoff role. I mean, look at these players right here. I'll just show you kind of my an, an idea of where the players are typically at these days. And I think competitive is actually more fun because, because why you don't have the threat of a submarine and, you know, uh, carriers and so forth because guess what a carrier can just fly around and spot you right off the bat and how, what fun is that there's no point of positioning now you're spotted from the moon i already know where you're going as soon as i see a carrier spots all of us look he knows the direction i'm going where do you think i'm gonna probably gonna go i'm going down this way all right game's over he knows my the jig is up and all i can do is really either as a destroyer pop smoke and just run away or get shot at how what fun is that and of course the next thing is the cruiser player you're spotted from the moon you're shot at from all different directions directions. I mean, literally, let's say a, a cruiser is like, oh, I'm traveling this way. Well, guess what? Somebody can fire from there, cross shot, cross shot, cross shot right there. And God forbid we have a destroyer player who's going to torpedo right off the bat. What more can I do as a cruiser player, but then just turn around and run? That's the nature of the game. I'm, I'm sorry to say that that's this the game style with the, the, the destroyer player. Now, what's the other problem with the, um, the submarine? So let's talk about the submarine problem. Where is a submarine icon? I don't think I have a submarine icon here. Forgive me. Let's just pretend this is a submarine, okay? Again, submarine, submarine, pretend that's a submarine, okay? So that's a submarine, and let's say he's going to basically just maneuver unabated. Like, literally, he could just go right here, spot me. I have no way to detect him. There, there. I don't have, unless I'm a cruiser with that anti-surveillance radar, which they only have on a few cruisers, I don't have that in a submarine or uh, destroyer player. So guess what? 
I'm going to be spotted from the moon right here because his detection is literally five or something less than a destroyer because I don't know any destroyer that can almost outspot some submarines. Maybe a Jaeger. I don't play Jaegers that much, but majority of the destroyer players will get outspotted, which means detected first. And guess what? Here's the problem. Let's say he, the, the submarine has a, a destroyer, or a, um, a cruiser there, a destroyer there, and maybe a battleship right here. Okay. Now look at me as a a destroyer player, and I and I, like here, right here, I get out, I get out spotted. Right. All the submarine player has to do is go underwater. That's it. He hits he hits the down key. He goes underwater. Boom! I can't find him. But look, I have two options. One, I'm spotted. He, they're gonna get free shots at me. And the submarine player can literally stay there above water and keep spotting me. Now, if I decide to either fire at him, the only thing I have to to kill this guy is I have to literally drive my ship over the submarine player and depth charge him. That's my as a destroyer player. I can't do that without being shot at by these dudes because I'll go reveal I'll reveal my detection and I'll die. Number two is I could fire my guns while he's on the surface, and then all he has to do is go underwater. Now, since I fired my guns in World of Warships, there's a penalty for that. If you fire your guns, your detection ability or concealment goes out to the range of your guns. So, for example, if my guns are going from 0 to 12 kilometers, anybody within a 12-kilometer circle here, I mean, if you want to draw a circle so you can get a visual image, this circle right here means that if I fire... If I fire anybody within that circle that is like, let's say there's a guy right here. If I fire anybody within that 12 kilometer detection can see me, which means I, that won't go away for at least 20 seconds. So 20 for 20 seconds, I'm spotted. So, but I took the shot because I thought I could kill this guy. When I fire my guns, I will get spotted from about 12 on. And anybody within that circle means these guys right here, if they were in 12, they can all take a free shot. I mean, I have, can't do crap about it. All I can do is turn around and pop smoke and break that line can, that line of sight with them and just run away. And again, I'm just running away again. You see what this anti-ship system can do. It makes me run away, pop smoke, and what fun is that engagement? And then God forbid this guy's a radar cruiser. He radars me, and boom, I'm spotted for the whole duration of that radar, and they're all taking free shots at me, and there's nothing I can do other than maybe do a wild torpedo run and just shoot and so forth. And this is why that makes the games play boring. Now, the other aspect is the battleships typically will sit in the back, and the cruiser players, since their guns reach out to 20 or 25-ish kilometers, they can literally just sit back, kite away, and do this kind of number right here. And that's where the majority of ships are going to be. They're going to be in the back. And again, this I'm just using this as an example. This is not this is clan battle, so don't, don't pay attention to that. But let's say, I'm just talking about randoms here. Randoms, players are literally sitting in the back like this, because they don't want to take damage from their ships. They're all sitting right here, right here, right there. And that's the nature of the gameplay now. The only guys up front are the submarines and maybe the destroyer player that is bold enough. Let's pretend that's a submarine right here. They're literally going to do all this, and they're going to push all our guys back here. Look at the distance that you're, you're playing. I mean, you're literally hoping that oh, I can shoot somebody at 25, 23 kilometers-ish and have fun with that. And then you're you're having a submarine player just destroy the DD gameplay because now we can't go in and capture objectives and do whatever. You might as well just be the submarine, the new destroyer now. It is literally going to run around everywhere and just spot everybody for you. And then you can, there's nothing you can do about it other than depth charge wildly, hopefully guess where the depth charges go. And that just makes it so boring. And since that is the case, the destroyers are running the back. People are complaining and they're toxic saying, you're not doing your job. Why aren't you supporting me? Why aren't you spotting for me? Or why aren't you doing this for me? Why are you spotting for me? Why are you capturing the objective? Well, look, I'm getting shot at by this guy, this guy, this guy. And I'm also getting shot at by this destroyer because he's being spotted by this, this, crew, this, this, um, submarine player. What can you do? You see? So, and why do I like clan battles way more? Because why? And I'll show you a, a, a clip. Let's go back to the WoW's render system here. Let's go Napoli push. Why is it fun? Because I'll show you this render right here. And let's see if I can get it up for you. Yeah, not send it. Okay. Let me find it for you. Where is this gameplay at? Okay, here we go. I think you can. I think this will work. Oh man, I have, I have to find it. Okay, there we go. All right, there we go. You can see it there. Okay. Notice first of all, there's no carrier. There's no submarine. This is fun. 
right off the bat. There's no anti-ship weapon system in the game. There's literally just battleships, cruisers, and destroyer players. The ship on ship fun. Okay. Look at that. Destroyer players going in the caps. At least we can do that. We can agree that that is the role of a destroyer player. Okay. We go in there, we cap, have fun. Now, the objective of the other team in clan battles is, again, the same idea. Whoever you know wins is based on points. At the top of the screen, there are points right here. And whoever has the most points in the day wins. How do you accomplish those points? One, by destroying ships, of course. And number two is capture the points, hold them as long as you can, and survive. The most ships, if you can keep all your ships alive, you win. If you lose all your ships, you lose. If you capture the points and hold them for the duration of the battle and stay alive, you win the game. So right off the bat, they look, submarines, look at this. Now you actually have people pushing up and holding caps. Because why? There's no threat of a submarine there that would, one, spot you and torpedo you at will. Okay, I know they try to nerf the submarines by you can't shotgun anymore from three kilometers in, but it doesn't matter. The, the threat, the, just the mere fact that a submarine player is there and you can't do anything about it is what terrifies people and makes them run in the back of the map. Okay, look at this. Look at the drastic difference you see in clan battles and maybe I would say ranked if there's no submarines or carriers. Look at the drastic difference of positioning. One, you have communication. Number two is you actually have people that are working together that are actually going to play the objective. And notice a different style of gameplay. Look at that. More fire gunfire in these close engagements. Look at these close engagements right here. You're actually at least doing something that's fun and engaging, right? Marceau can run around. At least he's getting shot at. And then there's some kind of, hey, at least this guy can actually blind fire or shoot back at this guy. Submarines, you can't do it. Airplanes, you really can't shoot back either. Other than hopefully the computer's AA system will do a fireworks show and make you have fun, right? But Look, at least you can run around. This guy's still not spotted. That's fun because why? You're using your 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 ability to move around and use strategy to hopefully win the game and hopefully that makes it more engaging for you because you can run around the map and position, get cover like in Call of Duty. I run over here, grab cover, and maybe I can sneak up on the enemy and nobody can spot me, right? Okay, look, look at this engagement. Wow, this team is doing a great job. They're taking their ships. They're actually moving forward in unison, in combat of form, in formation, and they're actually firing back an object. And look, these engagements are fun. There's probably within seven to 10 kilometers of engagement. That's awesome. And I, what, oh, I have to come and support you? Great. Look, destroyer player working in unison with a battleship, firing, not worrying about being torpedoed by a submarine. At least we're shooting back. At least we're torping and having fun. And these guys, and at least a destroyer player's torpedoes, you can actually dodge them. That's at least fun because player skill requires me, hey, I actually hit this guy by aiming and firing and letting it fire and forget and hopefully it hits the guy, right? Rather than submarines homing missiles, whatever, not fun. So there, there's here, here's what's fun. Okay, so what is the solution to the submarine CV problem? Well, one, don't play randoms if you don't want to play that, okay? If you don't want to play submarines and carriers and don't play it, and then maybe if you want to bring something that can combat the submarine, okay? Me personally, I think the only thing to combat the submarine nowadays is honestly, I don't know. What can I think? I, I want to say a destroyer. It used to be a destroyer player, but that's all I can think of. A destroyer player that you, you just got, it takes a long time to kill a submarine for a destroyer player because I got to go in, risk myself being shot at and killed. And it's got to be patient and find the right time to push a destroyer. That's all I can, or a submarine. That's all I can think of and how to kill a submarine and then calling on your battleships to depth charge the guy, whatever. That doesn't seem fun to me. But my, my personal opinion in order to solve the, the submarine problem is one, remove them from the game. Two, pick a destroyer to combat them. And three, you just have to work together as a team and just depth charge the crap out of an area. As soon as you spot a, a submarine, depth charge the crap out of it. That's that's my solution, but that's not fun. Depth charging a submarine is not a part of the game that's fun to me. I don't, I don't know about you, but whatever, I digress. How to combat carriers, don't play randoms and uh, bring in the Holland or some kind of anti. Even Holland nowadays has been nerfed. I, I feel like it doesn't shoot down planes as better as good as they can be because they're armored. You can have you can have seat carriers that have airplanes that can reheal themselves in the air. Okay, whatever. All right, so we're trying to combat this push right here. It's kind of engaging and fun. And did we win? The, yep, we actually survived. We actually win this on points because look, they even though they capture points, which is fun, we actually did the best we could coordinate fire and survive. That's fun. Yay, we win. So, I mean, that's just examples of how to make the ship, you know, the gameplay fun. So I open this to your opinion as to how do you think we can solve this problem of the carriers, the submarines, and then, and then just be people being in the back all the time. How do you change that? How do we supposed to bring discussion? How do we supposed to get people to move forward and not be afraid to like these guys? Look, they're not be afraid 
to risk their ship or so forth. And I, I thought it was more engaging. I mean, the introduction of heals and inconsumables in the clan battles nowadays, I think that's doing its best to keep the ships alive, to make people push in because they're not afraid to lose HP. Maybe that's in the step in the right direction. You let me know. What are your thoughts? I think that, you know, in clan battles, we're, we're, we're popping off these extra heals. So not only does your ship have a heal, but now you have team heals. So maybe that is a step in the right direction. And with the, the kind of gameplay we're seeing today, uh, maybe you need to have team heals to bring back the health so it doesn't make these ships that are armored. They're supposed to be armored and tanky. You're supposed to take damage. This is a game where you have health bars that go down. That's the whole point. Not sit in the back and protect all your health. The point of the game is to actually engage, fire, shoot, take damage, call for heals. Then you have the consumable, which also call for a team heal. I mean, that's the only thing I can think to, uh, to um, change the nature of the game. So you let me know what your thoughts on there. And let's take a look at the game itself of how this game can be more engaging. All right. First of all, my personal opinion, pick a destroy player. Now, the I think uh, the YouTube videos I've been watching, Sea Lord Mountain Bat and everything just brought up the fact that, look, these resources up here are really killing the game, I think, because why? The first thing is you used to get flags and I think they brought it up. You used to get flags just by doing the game and playing the game and getting achievements and everything. But now they've kind of reduced that and you only get them in containers and they only give you a few of them. And if you haven't noticed, like when you play the game, it costs money to, to fire guns, to resupply your ship. It costs these credits. And if you're a brand new player in the game, you're not going to have a lot of these credits off the bat. I mean, I have a lot because I've been playing a lot and I've been saving the money. But notice I'm not playing with all these flags anymore. Arm, look how much the costs are these days. 96 6,000 here, 96,000 there, just to boost your ship's gimmicks. I mean, this this gimmick right here is to sh increase your ship speed by 5%, which you may need, but the fact that other player, players are running it, you need to have these armed. Otherwise, you're at a down and you're at a disadvantage. So it forces you to spend these credits. And look, when you add all these up, you're talking about almost like a million, half million with a million worth of credits that you're spending. And the game doesn't reward you with the same amount of credits back. I mean, you're not making a million credits per game unless you have these flags and boosters and everything that they, they're supposed to give you, but they don't give you those anymore. And it costs you so much to play the game. That's number two problem. And they want you to spend all this money to get that. Now, the other one is spending money on ships. I mean, it's forced players because they don't want to go through the grind. Let's talk about the tech tree. I get it. When you first play the game, you're starting at tier one and working your way up. Now, these ships are really, I would say, inexpensive. But the higher you go, look how expensive these ships are becoming. 11 minutes, 13 minutes, 12 minutes. And you're, you're only making like a few hundred thousand, maybe a game, after you subtract the what it costs to play the ship, to fire your guns, to shoot torpedoes, or you consumables. They cost money. And it's tough, I'm telling you. I mean, just grinding out the lines is tough to play to get. And you get you look, at it takes so long to get. And guess what? It's going to force people to just go, what? you know what? Let me just buy a premium. Let me just buy whatever. Let me just spend XP. I, back in the day, I used to convert free XP. Look how much it costs to convert free XP. 25 XP to doubloons. One doubloon gets you 25 XP. And you can, and that adds up over time. It costs a lot of money. And I just started doing that because I was tired of playing tier six, tier seven. And once you get to tier seven, you're up tier by tier nine or tier 10. And they're firing better guns and weapon systems against you. And there's nothing you can really do about it, right? So guess what? It frustrates players. They're... You're going to grind, and then you just grind right up to tier 10, and you don't know how to play the game. So let's talk about how to play the game correctly. First thing I said, what did I say? Pick a destroyer player. Be a destroyer. Because I think being a destroyer player, rather than being a Vermont or Louisiana, it just you're just going to sit in the back and conserve your HP and just not play the game. You're And you're going to be hunted by submarines and carriers, and that's going to frustrate you. And guess what? If it frustrates you, it pushes you back on the map, and you're not being an engaging player. The only engaging player right now I've seen is obviously the, the submarine player, but I don't play submarines. I'm not even going to spend money on them. That's how much I hate them. And then that, the other one is a, a, a carrier player. I'm not going to be a carrier player because I don't find that engaging at all as well. Look, carrier player, I'm not going to play that. It's not engaging. The only, look, all these carriers, I mean, goodness, they, all they do is just fly their weapon system around and hunt ships and blow them up, and they don't take damage at all other than if finally at the end of the match, by the time 18-minute mark, you finally find the carrier, the game is already lost. It's not fun shooting a carrier. What what fun do you get out of that? Be a destroyer player. Why do I say be a destroyer player? Now, the first destroyer player I ever got was the gearing. So why? Because it's a it's the gamut of everything. So let's take a look at the gearing. What is the gearing at? Okay. Basic rule number one about playing the game. You're supposed to run around the map and capture points, right? I mean, look at this little thing. This little thing is supposed to run around. It's got some of the best speed in the game. 
look, it can go 37.8 knots. So most ships, um, bigger ships, don't go that fast unless you're like a French cruiser, fast, you know, battleships that have engine boost. But most likely, a destroyer player is typically the uh, fastest, you know, fast, so-called fast ship in the game that can go around and run. The other one I was talking about was the concealment. Look, your concealment is one of the lowest in the game. Besides a submarine player, you have some of the best concealments in the game. Um, I haven't assigned a commander yet. Let me let me pick a commander here. Okay, so if you build out and upgrade, look, you can get it down to 5.9. I believe the legendary upgrade, you can go even lower. Look, 5.9, that's some of the best concealment in the game besides the submarine. So guess what? 5.9 concealment, which means at 5.9 kilometers, if you if the enemy breaks that line of sight and see, breaks into 5.9 kilometers, you can see me. Also, if you can read right there, the detectability after firing the main gun shells, 11.1 kilometers. So if once I click the button and I fire, you can see that ship. And because I fired and no smoke, no no uh, islands cover me, that means anybody out to 11.1 kilometers within that radius will see me after I fire the main gun. So that's the idea there. Number two is, are you firing the right main guns? So these two guns are here I'm using firing. I'm just using an example as a story. There's obviously bigger, you know, ships that can fire, uh, you know, armor piercing shells or HE shells. There's two types of shells that we're going to talk about. Now, there's another shell that's called SAP. We're not going to talk about it now for the basic brand new player. Let's talk about two types of shells. One, you have HE or high explosive. And I, uh, if you guys want to use acronyms, remember this and use the right type of shell for the right situation. And I came up with this just to remember HE stands for high explosive shell. Or if you want to remember even better, HE stands for hits everything. It, it doesn't matter about angles or anything. HE hit everything. You fire it at anything, any angle, whatever, any ship, it'll blow up and take damage, right? That's the cool thing. Now, as long as the armor supports it now again you need a p that's the other problem with this game you need a phd level to understand the game for brand new players out there you're gonna have to go online and read and youtube what i did i just went online and youtubed everything just to learn how to play the darn game just from watching youtube players and i understand it pretty quickly nowadays your, your generation the new generations out there even older generations will learn a lot just by watching youtube and searching the internet great so for me example if i'm going to use the main battery am i going to shoot he at anything so if a ship is angled, if a ship is not angled, if a ship is onto you, most likely, if as long as the armor is not like literally uh, heavy, heavy, heavy armor, your shell will allow you to damage that ship. So for example, HE right there, if you're reading right there, you can see, let's see if I can show it to you. I can't click on it while I'm showing. HE means hit everything or high explosive which means that it can penetrate armor penetration capacity. Anything with 68 millimeters armor less, that thing will hit the thing and blow it up and take damage, right? It will hit the armor, blow up, and that explode, and it will do damage if the armor is 68 millimeters or less. Again, that is my understanding of the basic idea of the game. So if a ship is angled or a ship has low armor at that particular spot, use HE, hit everything of that nature. The other one, the other type of show is AP armor piercing or i like to say angling poonannies or angling or i'm not going to say that bad word whatever angling poonannies that's how you remember it ap angling poonannies that means the guy's angling don't don't use it because why he's angling because there's a there's a, a mechanic in the game where it bounces these like just think of these things as literally pure steel shells and these lead pieces of just sheet metal that are going to literally hit another piece of metal. And what happens when metal and metal hits at certain angles? They bounce. So angling, that's why people angle. That's what people call, so quote unquote, quite kite away. So if you see a ship angling away, angling poonanny, don't fire the AP at them. Unless you for sure know you can, you know, if you're a more advanced player in the game, I'm talking about the beginner player of the game. If you got a nose in, like literally, what does angling mean? This, or I'll show you an example. This, if you see a ship like this, this guy's angled. How are you going to penetrate any of this armor? Because look, as soon as the shell hits, it's going to bounce right there. Boom. Hits right here, bounce right there. Hit right. If you shoot right here, boom, it's going to bounce right there because there's a gimmick, or sorry, not a gimmick, a, a mechanic in the game that says it takes into account the shell's angles and the ship's armor angles. And it's just like in real life. If you shoot a shell and it's and this is that angled armor, boom. Look at the, and first of all, look at the 38 millimeters, which means that high explosive can penetrate this. At what, if you had a 68 millimeter or less high explosive round or hit everything around, you can hit this and it'll blow up and it'll shatter and it'll, and it'll take some damage, right? 32 millimeter, very nice. 32 millimeter, very nice. So remember earlier I showed you the guns, like if I had these HE shell 68 millimeters, I can hit these areas and do damage. 19 millimeters, very good. I can hit damage. Again, this requires a pH level idea of studying, but I'm just dumbing it down for everybody. Look. HE shells on all of this, 
if you see an angle target like this. Now, obviously, 432 millimeter, obviously, HE is not going to do anything to that because his why? Only 68 millimeter armor. If I fired armor piercing at this guy, it's most likely going to shatter like right there. Bam, bam, bam. Unless you're, you have what they call overmatch, and you can go Google overmatch in World of Warships. It means that if this armor, if this AP shell has the ability to fuse in time and just have enough penetration ability and enough speed at the range, again, it takes in all types of mechanics, initial velocity, ending velocity, angles, whatever. You can literally fire right there, and it'll overmatch. Like, for example, a 32-millimeter um, armor plate will be overmatched by, let's see here, what's the... Um, the ship. It's called Yamato. If you find Yamato and you don't understand what Yamato is, Yamato is one of the biggest battleships in the game. It's a Japanese ship right here. Here's Yamato. Take a look at the guns. 460 millimeters. Look at that. This gun will overmatch 32 millimeters easily because why? It's got the mechanic. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, did I say something wrong out there? Uh, this is all what YouTube is saying is like, oh, Yamato has the greatest, one of the greatest overmatches. It takes 460 millimeters, divides it by a number. I forgot what that number is. And it overmatches that number. So that number and below, it will, the shells will just go right through and it doesn't care about angling armor or whatever. It just go boom right through and takes you out. So that's why these guns are so cool. That's why a lot of people pick the Yamato because of that reason. The armor piercing 100, 460 millimeters can literally just go right through you. So whoop de doo that's fun. Anyways, I'm going back to the idea of what we talked about there. Just basic idea of Battleship. Let me go back to what I saw earlier. Uh, I just, I'm just picking a ship, random ship here. I think I was picking Iowa. Yeah, Iowa. So armor piercing, angling punanis, don't do it. HE all day long, uh, most of the time for maximum effect of armor. If you see a ship like this, that's, that is what we call full broadside. Now you can shoot AP, and I, what I normally do is just aim at the waterline and boom, right off the bat and shoot. That's the first step. Knowing how to shoot your guns, is because this is the gunship game, right? You're, you're literally firing artillery shells and trying to hit the guy. That's the first step. Learn what kind of rounds you're using. Pick the right ship. Okay, so let's go back to the destroyer player. I like playing destroyers because why? Angling still affects you right here. So look, as a destroyer player, let me go ahead and pick, uh, where is that gearing again? Let's say we pick daring. I just pick, I pick another, here's another good uh, destroyer line I like to pick. Why? It just focuses on being a gunboat DD, torpedo, does everything roll that you want. 19 millimeters right here. Uh, oh, here's a good thing I know about the gearing. So the reason why I pick gearing is because look, See these guns are here? These guns are 113 millimeters, which means that I take the gimmick, I divide by a certain amount of number, certain amount, it'll only penetrate armor penetration of 19 millimeters. So knowing your guns and knowing your role as a ship means that you have to understand that you, some of your guns will not penetrate the correct armor. So let's go back to gearing, okay? Remember, hold that thought, 113 millimeter guns on the gearing. Now look at this, gearing has a 21 millimeter play here, which means that earlier you saw the daring, can only penetrate with the HE uh, hit everything around, the H high explosive around, 19 millimeters. Do you think that 19 millimeter uh, that math is going to work on this gearing? No. That's why I've caught, been caught with a daring and a vampire, like, or whatever, with small collar guns. I keep firing HE. I'm like, why is it not doing any damage to this guy? Oh, I had to study at PhD level, right? Again, study your ships. If you want to study or watch videos like this, you understand that that 19 millimeter armor hitting capability will not work on 21. 21 is bigger than 19, right? That means I got to shoot at this little section right here. And look, if you're looking at a ship from this kind of like angle, look, I'm mostly hitting this middle section right here as opposed to I got to aim at this small and this guy's moving, he's angling, he's running away. Very difficult to lose. So you practice aiming. Another thing, practice, practice, practice. Learn how to aim. Watch videos and learn how to aim. Watch people play. Why are they aiming? So that's a key to success right there is know the type of round you're shooting as a destroyer player and where to aim. Normally, I'm hitting this area right here. I'm aiming like just forward of the, the, the guy's nose. My shells then eventually hit here, here, and maybe if I fire the right shells, I would hit majority around this area right here. So that's where I'm typically aiming at. So know how to pick your ship, know what type of round you're firing, and know where to aim. That's the key to success right off the bat. Be patient. As a destroyer player, you need to be patient because you're running around. You have to know, again, what is your concealment? So let me take the, survive, or the armor layout down. Know your concealment. I know that I cannot drive within 5.9 kilometers of an objective and not be spotted or maintain that spotting right off the bat as much as I can. I'm using my torpedoes and guns to fend off anything that's near you, but your goal is to go in and cap objectives and kill other destroyed players, spot for the rest of your team, and so forth. That is how you win the game. Okay, so enough about the ship's gameplay role. Let's go back to the video. Um, 
Let's go, let's go back to uh, talking about the uh, replays here. Uh, so again, why is this so important? Here's the map again. What can we do to solve the problem? So again, like I said, to not make it boring, to not make it toxic, turn off the chat, pick a destroyer player, and learn to be a destroyer player first. In my personal opinion, that's how I learn. And then later on, when you're more advanced, pick the cruiser, pick the battleship player, so you're not running, you're not kiting in the back right here all the time, and just being this, like, camping in the back. Kind of, look, I mean, I've seen guys literally like this, angling away, running away like this, and it's not conducive to gaming. I don't know. How do I make this? Well, you need to talk to your teammates and just click on the map. You don't have to chat with them. Just click on the map. Hey, hey, requesting support, requesting support. Come over here. Help me out. Requesting support. Help me out and work together as a team. Maybe if I'm just talking about this video, you guys will like, hey, new players, support your destroyer player. He's the one that's literally going out there and supporting and going out there spotting everybody for you so you have somebody to shoot at. And number two, he's going out there and capping objectives, doing what he's supposed to do. So support the destroyer player. You keep your destroyer players alive, you're having to have a better day. That's why I say pick a destroyer first so you can learn the aspects of the game. You can run around, not get spotted right off the bat. You're trying to learn how to, okay, how long does it take to cap objective? What is it? How does the, the hiding behind islands work? And how does it maneuvering through these islands work? And, and then how do I spot these guys? And then I'm, oh, I'm hunting just the submarines and so forth. And I'm also trying to spot, you know, maybe a, a, a carrier out there so I can do sn long range sniping for all the guys in the back but push up with your destroyer and then that way you can help your team a complete objective so the first objective was as a short player cap the objective then go spot other destroyer players eliminate their destroyer player and then spot the rest of your team that's the order of events cap a point move forward spot the destroyer or submarine kill these guys and then spot the rest of your team so that the rest of your team can push up the reason why we're losing so many battles and that guys are in the back complaining is because one, you're being a bad destroyer player. You die right off that. Look, if I eliminate destroyer, let's take him off the map. I destroy, I destroy the destroyer. Now look what the red, red enemy team can do. They can spot you all day, which then forces the player to go in the back. And this is what World Worship has become. CV goes and spots you, run to the back. Submarine spots you, run to the back. Destroyer player, no destroyer player left because you didn't do a good job of one angling. You didn't be patient. You just rushed your death. We you know the radar. That's another thing. Know the distances of radar. Typically, a radar for Soviet cruisers is 12. So let's pretend like this is 12 right here. If this this is a cruiser player, don't go inside that radar if you're not willing to get shot at. So if I'm a destroyer player, I know, hey, here's 12 kilometers. I'm not going within 12 of a cruiser. American cruisers are typically around 10 uh, or less. So if I'm 10, stay out 10. You don't want to get a radar, stay out of 12 for cruisers or 10. I just say, just know the number 12. I think that's the max radar range I've seen most player, players have. So I just stay out there. I linger around this area spot until it's safe. Then I push forward. If then I can push forward, if I know there's no cruiser player there, so let me delete this, this uh, ring. If I know there's no radar cruiser, again, learn the radar. If you don't know what radar is, hit hold tab, click on the ship, and know if they have radar. That's the new thing. Did, if you didn't hear what I just said there, if you don't know what a ship has, press down and hold on tab, the tab button, find that enemy ship, and then click on it and see if it has radar. If it has radar, assume 12 or less. If it's an American, Soviet cruisers have 12. American cruisers have 10 or less. That's how I remember it. So how do we make this game better? I've already talked about it. A lot, a lot of discussion. I mean, this would be like an hour-long discussion about oh, so many, so many things. So all I'm talking about is how do we get better and what can we do to overcome it? Obviously, I can't go to Wargaming and tell them to change the game, get rid of submarines or cruiser. And there's enough complaining about it as it is. But I've seen right now, the meta right now is causing all these players to push in the back because of these. that makes the game so boring. So what I have to do is I have to become a destroyer player to go solve that problem. One, I'm going to go hunt down the, the, the other destroyer player, kill him off the bat. The other one is a submarine. Most likely submarines are not going to push into a, a destroyer nowadays because why? They got nerfed. They can't shotgun within three kilometers in. So how do I solve that? Destroyer player, if you have situation awareness, look around. Is there no other destroyer player here? Then I can push into the submarine and then depth, I have to drive over him and depth charge him with caution, of course. You don't want to just drive in and then get shot at by all his buddies that are like, if there's a cruiser player here and a battleship player here, you probably don't want to just drive in on a submarine and just get, yeah, you depth charge him, but then you die as well. So play it smartly and with caution, okay? So again, so let's sum it back up. How do we get better at this? One, Turn off chat. Don't listen to people. If you're brand new, don't listen to chat. It's just toxic. 
You can still communicate with players by clicking on the mini map over here. I, I say encourage you, blow up the mini map. Please, please, please blow up the mini Look how big this map is. You can see everything. It's your it's your overview of the battlefield objective because you remember, you're a captain of your ship. You're also a captain of the battlefield space, so you have to know what's around you. Blow this up. Look around. Where do people need you? Click on the map. Hey, I need requests. I need you here. Capture this point here and so forth. Number two, pick a destroyer because why? You're going to learn so much as a destroyer player that, yeah, it may be scary at first, but I trust me you'll pick a destroyer you'll go around and learn the mechanics of the game much much better so later on when you become a destroyer or cruiser and battleship player you will understand like okay being in the back of the map does not help okay but it does help if you're pushing with your destroyer and supporting that destroyer player it's not all about you okay it's about working as a team-based game this store is a key component of your survivability, so go in and support with your radar, with your fast firing guns, with your armor as a battleship, and then you'll have a much more enjoyable, pleasant day. So that's the third thing. Or And then, okay, we already talked about a few things there. Know your ship mechanics. If you have a destroyer player and you're driving into this destroyer player, know what types of shells to use. Obviously, I'm not going to pick armor piercing right off the bat if I'm seeing a nose in. If the, the guy's right nose in on me, I'm not going to pick armor piercing because, uh, yeah, I'll hit the guy, but will it do any damage? Armor piercing AP stands for, you know, uh, angling poonanny. If this guy's angling to you, don't pick the angling poonanny shell. Pick the HE shell or hit everything shell. That means that no matter what angle he's at, the HE will do damage to him of some form of kind and you'll more damage on him means that he'll die and blow up and boom, you'll have a nice day. That's the idea. So eliminate the, the submarine and the destroyer player and boom, look what you have. You have open space right here. Now the enemy team's having a bad day because now the enemy team has to figure out, do I push into the destroyer or run away? And you want to cause the other team to run away and maybe this makes the game a little bit more enjoyable because now we have engagements at this range rather than engagements at, I mean, look at this, a battleship and a battleship like that, this is not fun, okay? Guys like this, the, this, this is not fun right here. Playing the game like this is not what it's designed to be. If you want to do this, play um, Battleship the board game, okay? Come on. The, the, the goal of this game was to play in the middle here. Let's have fun. Let's enjoy. If you lose your ship, guess what? You can play, restart and play another game. You, there's no nothing wrong with losing your ship in the game. That's another idea I want to tell you guys is just because you lose the ship in the game doesn't mean you'll lose it forever. Push up, take damage, have fun, play the game. If you, you'll learn a lot from making mistakes. You can't make a mistake if you're sitting in the back. That is a mistake in itself. Okay, so like I said, I've talked about enough about this right now. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. It's a great discussion. I like having these discussions. A lot of got YouTubers out there are doing this uh, talk about what's going on with the nature of the game and, uh, and so forth. Um, I hope that... You know, this discussion brings out a little bit better gameplay, a, a little bit better talk and, and so forth. I like the destroyers. I only play destroyers most of the time. No, I'm sorry, I don't say only, but I prefer playing the destroyer player. Look up my stats. I just play destroyers most of the time. You won't see the majority of the time I'm playing destroyers because I think they're more fun. They're more impactful, more engaging. Uh, you notice I have almost all the destroyers. Like You can get a tier 10. That's another thing. If you're trying to get to tier 10, which I think is the most fun tier right now, because tier 7, tier 8, you're getting up tier by other ships like tier 9. It doesn't make very enjoyable when you're, you know, you're being out leveled, out tiered. That's the biggest gripe. And then people are just spending money that don't know how to play the game just to get to that tier and just want to try it out. I encourage you that if you're going to spend money and up tier yourself to the level 10 and everything, play the destroyer player first and then play the cruiser battleship role later because that allows you to learn the mechanics of the game like I've already talked about, beating to death. And honestly, the destroyer player role is just so much more fun. You're much more impactful and, and, and even in for the long run of the game. So... Anyways, I've talked enough. Uh, I'll, I'll save it up. I'll do more clan battle videos. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate the talk and support. Again, leave the comments. I love the discussion. Love the talk. And again, be friendly to each other about it. We're trying to make the community better and have a great place. Make friends and learn something from it. As always, you guys see you guys see me out there. Say hi. As always, take care. Be safe. And we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.